What does it take to convert a hydraulic camshaft setup to mechanical? Let's dive in, shall we? And I'll show you what it takes. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Matt. It's been a hot minute since I've posted a video and the reason why I'll show you. This has been a real pain in the ass. However, I'm going to show you what it's taking to convert the cylinder head that's on the Chevy 1.8 Cruze project to a mechanical setup. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so the first thing, we got the camshafts, right? We know we had to switch to a mechanical style bucket. However, the first issue that came up with these camshafts, I'm gonna grab this cylinder head right here on the floor. This is an extra cylinder head from my spare engine. Let's toss this up on the table and I'll show you what changes I had to make. And still will have to make. Uh -huh. All right, so first thing right off the rip, um, let me go into a little bit about the difference between the US market cylinder heads and the cylinder heads over in the UK. Some of the main differences are the bolt pattern here on the intake. So the intake bolt pattern is different. I'll toss a picture here of the difference, I believe instead of this being here, there's a bolt here and here and also here. I don't believe some of the, it's just different. I don't know off the top of my head. So that's different. And that not only extends from the intake side of things, but also how this thing is machined along with these camshafts. So one of the things I had to do is I had to remove about one tenth of an inch off of the, the I guess you can call it a thrust surface. So when we put this camshaft in here, you have a, a few thousandths of an inch worth of play basically measured one of the stock camshafts here and you can even tell that how this thing is casted is a little different so the amount of meat right here on this thrust surface was different so i'll show you a clip here took it to this guy that happens to have a machine shop you know he charged me about 150 bucks for the hour and we machined the surface down i'll show that video here And it's the same thing on both camshafts. Now that's just where some of the other differences start. So I imagine the surface right here is machined slightly different. The stock camshafts do have VVT. These camshafts are mechanical with no VVT or variable valve timing. So we'll be locking everything out with these and the other camp gears, which I'm happy about because currently the way things stand, it's really a pain in the butt tuning the fuel tech for this stuff. And it's always just kind of been a problematic thing for these engines that when it works fine, it works great. But when it doesn't, it's a hard, it's just a pain in the ass to get, get to work again. So one of the other issues is I'm going to have to physically grind the clearance right here where these buckets rest because if we set this camshaft in there, it will not fully rotate because the base circle of this camshaft is quite a bit different. If you just look at the amount of meat of the uh, base circle on this camshaft versus the amount of meat on this camshaft is quite a bit different. I believe it's about a hundred of an inch, which makes a difference because this camshaft will not rotate without the lobe of the camshaft hitting the edge here. And I'll get a little bit of a close up. And this is the area I am talking about right here. So if we come over here to this camshaft, we rotate it. Let's see right there where it hits. So it needs about one hundred of an inch taken off of that. So I'm going to have to take a carbide burr or bit and just machine each one of these, which sounds like a good time. 
<laughs> Which brings me to my next point. The valves are different. I had bought a set of these exhaust valves in the past, but they had got stolen out of the vehicle. Forgot to lock it. Anyhow, point is that the tip of these valves are longer. You can see where the locks for the, the retainer sit into the valve right here and how tall this is. On the stock valve, we probably have two thirds less tip here. So it's about right there where my thumbnail is at. So I had to order some new valves. These are from Supertech. I do have a whole set, which these are some better quality, nicer flowing valves. The exhaust valves will do a lot better with the heat. So here is that box. It took some time to get this back, but, or I should say in. So we have a total of 16 valves, eight intake, eight exhaust, along with the keepers that go along with it. Even the keepers are different. They're just a single groove keeper instead of a double groove. So we've got some keepers as well. That took a hot minute to get that in. Not exactly the most desirable engine to get parts for. So it does take some time. Take some time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's toss that in there for now. So different valves, we got that on order. It's like, okay, cool. So the next thing I need to do is get the buckets. Well, if you take a look at all these buckets, this one right here, this biggest one, this bucket is 32 millimeters wide. And this thing just does not fit the bore of the American US model. That I guess is a different way that it's machined. Let me show you <laughs> just exactly what I'm talking about here. This is 32 and these here are 28. There's no way this is going to work without machining that as well. So I'm really looking for a solution where if you're here in the States, you want to be able to do this conversion to your 1.8. I've got a solution. Here are all the different types of buckets that I ordered in order to figure out what I can actually use. This one here is from Supertech. They wore back ordered on their 28 millimeter. However, starting out with using my dial caliper, I got a 27.5 because the measurements were pretty close to this 27.5. However, we put this into the bore. Just that half a millimeter difference, you know, it is too loose. It does not fit correctly. So my next logical step was let me find a 28 millimeter bucket. Great. Fits in there great, just like it should. However, this was just some generic hardened bucket that is for some sort of, I believe it was a Honda, a CF250 or something like that. It doesn't work and I'll, I'll show you why here in a moment. And that has to do with how thick the stem is down in here or the lash when we combine it with these valves here along with this bucket. It wasn't even reaching the camshaft so I believe the lash is, you know, it's a few thousandths. They have it in millimeters. So I'm not gonna tell you off the top of my head because I just don't know. So we went through the Supertech one that was too small in diameter. Found these that wore a CF for a motorcycle in which Supertech does have the 28 millimeter and I put one on order just to kind of figure out how much shim I need underneath these buckets and they were just on back order so I had them cancel it. The next thing I found out doing some research is that the Toyota 4A GE has 28 inch buckets and they did do conversion buckets like this here which that's what these two are. We've got a different shim thickness. You can see that this one is a 36. You can see how much longer the pole is in there. And this one is a 12. You can see how much shallower this one is. So while these two buckets fit, I got 
a bucket with the longest pole, which is a 36, and a bucket with the shortest pole. So the one with the shortest pole is even still too long by, I believe it was about six to nine thousandths, depending on the particular valve. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So part of the thing about converting it to a mechanical flat tappet setup is you do have to set the valve lash by getting different buckets. They have, oh, I don't know, maybe a dozen different lengths to set your lash properly. And it all depends on how long this, this post is sitting inside of there. So the solution I came up with is I'm going to take these to the machine shop along with all my buckets. I did order an entire bag. <laughs> and I imagine this probably irritated the shit out of uh, a Toyota dealer. And these themselves took about three weeks just to come in because even these lifters, it's just an older engine that never gained any popularity. But these buckets here were even hard to get a hold of. And these are, you can see it here, genuine Toyota parts right there. So I've got an entire bag of these things. I'll need to take those buckets along with all my valves to the machine shop. Take the cylinder head off the car. Again, this is just a spare cylinder head. I'll have to take that off, take it to the machine shop, have them... I talked to Supertech, they said that I could essentially remove whatever I needed off the tip because I was kind of guessing at the time, I'm like, is it cool if I remove even a quarter of an inch? Which, that's not absolutely necessary. It's about six to nine thousandths depending on which location these valves are in, the bucket, all that stuff. I'll probably just have them do a valve job on the other cylinder head, make sure these things seal up well. I'll use the, just purchase an extra one of these to kind of test fit everything. Make sure these valves were going to work before I ordered a whole set, they do. Um, so I do have the beehives that are the, the super tech in the cylinder head that's in the car, but so let me toss these into the cylinder head and I'll kind of show you what we're dealing with. Okay, so here is what I'm working with as far as, this is one of the buckets that was for the motorcycle, the CF250 or whatever. Perhaps you can see right here where this bucket is at. I'm gonna point to it right there. You can see the amount of space between it. Let me push this down real quick. See that it's down now. But there is about a good <laughs> ten, what, a tenth of an inch distance between this one here. And then if we switch over to the Toyota style, I push this thing up. Now we're lifting the camshaft up. So these valves would just hang open and I did a measurement, it's about six thousandths to, to nine thousandths once again. So it needs to go to the machine shop. So I'm working on this stuff in the background. I also do have, I know I posted a picture of this, but if you look back there, there's a nice CNC machined collector there. And then also over here in this box right here, I have some parts to make the manifold and we've got a new little tool that I'm going to do a review on. I specifically reached out to these people. Thought it would be pretty cool to create a new manifold. That's what the plan is here because and I'll show you in the next video that matches up perfectly with the old V-band turbo down there. So I think that's a pretty cool tool. I think I'm going to produce a nice piece as far as a manifold goes with this. And who knows, maybe I can sell some of them or I don't know. Who knows? And I'm going to toss a picture up here. I designed a flange, a new manifold flange that would make it easier to build a tubular 
turbo manifold, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm still waiting on that to come in. They've been slower because of, I sent this overseas to the people that I've sent it to before. However, it's taken them about three weeks just to do this. Before it took them probably about a week, but they've had some Chinese holidays that's delayed things. So I'll update you on that as soon as that comes in because I think that is a cool topic all in itself. Maybe, I don't know, let me know down in the comments what you think as far as you want me to show you how I went about designing this thing and whom I sent it to, whatever the case may be. Also, I've been working on, I've thought about t-shirts. T-shirts just never done well on this channel. However, I am putting together a course and I'm considering either doing like high performance engine building, teaching some of the little trade secrets that a lot of people just don't share on YouTube or if they do, you know, you have to search and search and search to find this kind of stuff. So to help support the channel in this project, perhaps it's something where you guys can learn something, uh, something of value, and then it will also help fund the channel, AKA some of this craziness, because going through all these different lifters and buckets and crap, by no means super expensive, but it is just a hobby. And it would be nice if, uh, you know, if you want to see this channel grow, uh, I'd like to get all this stuff done so we can actually prove the, the concept of this engine and its capability. However, it does take money. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's been three or four years already, I guess going on four next year. And I'm just anxious to get this stuff done. However, it takes time because it's not like all this stuff you can just... It's like, hey, here's the formula to make this a badass engine for your cruise or your Sonic, and here's what you need to do to get X amount of time down the strip. And the closing of the drag strip in my area, it's a quarter mile, I hate that. We do have the eighth, but I'm sure a lot of you guys know that an eighth mile just isn't great for front wheel drive. Uh, we'll do some testing at the 8th once I get everything together and then we'll just have to make a trip out to a quarter mile track probably somewhere across the country. But let me know down in the comments about the course thing, what you would like to learn. If I put together a course to sell, it would be inexpensive like perhaps you guys 25 bucks to everyone else, $50. Uh, I could do like a coupon code or something and I'll leave a link down below to what I've got together so far as far as a course idea goes, but I would like to hear your feedback. And that's all I got for now. I'm working on it, and as soon as that other part comes in, we'll talk more about this, this manifold and this cool tool that I have hanging out down, down there, down below. Anyways, we'll see you in the next video. Be sure to like, subscribe if you haven't, if you're new to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Peace out. With you peace out. And one last update, the car's still together. She's still running. There she is. Let's fire her up. Cold start. She runs like a champ still. Toss the key in here. Look at the coolant temp. It is ambient temp outside. There we go, no, no touching the throttle or anything. Fires right up. She just been out here chilling, waiting for some new parts. So now the real final Peace out with your peace out. We'll see you next time, folks. Peace out. Peace out.